CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. A look from overhead at St. Louis's 21-story tall sports palace, the Edward Jones Dome, with aerial coverage provided by Monster. Today is the day at halftime. Michigan State with a 38-33 to lead on the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Hi once again, everyone, and welcome back to the Final Four in singular at the half. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. Take a look at some of the numbers from the first half of this game, and uh, we have steals highlighted there because the Michigan State State Spartans have seven of them compared to a couple for North Carolina. North Carolina out shooting the Spartans. However, it is a 38 33 lead at halftime. Let's talk about some things that we saw in the first half. Start with uh, Carolina, Clark. Rashad McCants, a terrific all around offensive player. He can get his own shot as he does here. Nicely set up by Raymond Felton for the flush. But he did a good job defensively here on this play coming from behind the block. Paul Davis. But Michigan State has controlled the boards, especially at the offensive end. That's why they're on top and Michigan State inside Paul Davis on his way again to another double double he's had a double double in each of his last three games seven points and seven rebounds here at intermission and he's just playing with so much confidence and consistency which has really not been the staples of his career but he is really doing a great job and look at the confidence stroke from the outside when Paul Davis plays as well Michigan State goes from being a good team to a great team and he's also out playing Sean May and getting a lot of his help from his friends on the defensive end of the floor North Carolina the leading a scoring team in the nation only 33 points at halftime Sean May spending a lot of time on his keister in the first half only four points and cutting off Raymond Felton I will say this I think Michigan State is making a mistake trying to run with North Carolina they need to make the Tar Heels play more defense they don't like the guard Clark well I tell you what Michigan State has to run that's why they're on top they're pounding the boards they want to get up and run they want a dangerous out. game out North dangerous Carolina game to because play. North Carolina showed some fatigue Seth Sean May was struggling there I think the only way Michigan State wins is by continuing to keep the pressure on and pushing that pace pushing that pace pushing that pace that's the only way they can exactly win this game. exactly what North Carolina wants them to do I think Michigan is State run, is better run, run. they only have to play well for a couple of minutes and North Carolina will be back on top we'll see in about 20 minutes all right guys Earlier, we talked about Wayne Simeon and J.J. Redick being finalists for the Naismith Trophy, this wonderful piece of hardware. Now, let's look at the other two finalists for this year's new. We'll see the Fighting Illini play for the national championship Monday evening. Our coverage begins at 9 Eastern time with prelude to a championship that's followed by the NCAA title game. We thank you for joining us here on Singular at the Half. Jim and Billy are back with the second half of Michigan State and North Carolina after this. Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. The brick, the whistle, the crowd, the swish. I left the game, but it'll never leave me. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us are going pro. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by Paramount Pictures' The Longest Yard. McDonald's, Chevy, and by the Hartford Mutual Funds. Can you imagine you lose in the Big Ten tournament quarterfinals? No one believes you've got anything going for you going into the tournament. Now 20 minutes perhaps away from going to the championship game. Billy, let's take a look at our Pontiac game changer. One of the few things that went well in the half court set for North Carolina, and here you see McCants. We talked about his elevation. He gets a back screen, 
and then just goes to the basket and watch how high he will go to get this ball in the top. Nobody back there as Davis is screened from helping. The cans goes up and puts it away. All right, let's take a look now at the Powerade first half stats and what stands out to you here, Billy. Without question, fast break points. Michigan State getting off, getting right down the floor in a hurry, and I think that's been really the case with Brown and Aker sprinting out, beating North Carolina back down the floor, and then creating those situations, allowing Michigan State to get good offensive rebounding. Billy, this is a Michigan State team that beat only one ranked opponent. Of course, the Big Ten Conference wasn't producing a lot of teams in the top 25, but they had only one win over a ranked opponent before Austin last week. They beat Wisconsin for that uh, one uh, win. Uh, during the regular season, but until they played Duke and Kentucky, that was it. What has turned this team around? Well, I think that confidence, and I think also from the standpoint of getting completely healthy, and I think when you have two knights who are going to the backcourt to change the complexion is how they push the ball up the floor. It really helped. Let's take a look at the Coca-Cola Red Time Tournament Summary. And Illinois is in a championship game for the first time in their 100-year basketball history. First Big Ten team to reach the final since Indiana in 2002. And it could be all Big Ten. And North Carolina has other ideas. Manuel's back out on the floor. Remember, he picked up three in that first half. Three fouls. He missed his defensive presence and his leadership. One of the seniors. Makes it. Looking for some help. Anderson, who did not make a shot from the floor in that first half. Walking that baseline. Brown with the three. Too strong. And it's Jawad Williams, who had hefty numbers in that first half. Williams came out showing a lot of confidence that he had possessed in this tournament earlier. Good feed down low. Here he is. He had 12 in the first half. Comes up short. It's May with the lay-in. There are those hands. He was almost falling down as he was catching that ball. But again, North Carolina does not get back on defense. Ground wide open. It sets things up. Allen Anderson. Back out high to Brown. Can't trying to help the referee out a little bit. They just ignore him. Stolen. Stolen by and Jack Emanuel. Here comes May. Big numbers. May. Oh. Follow up. Pants. How about Brown? Offering May's shot. That's the first time in this ball game we've seen May get down the floor for the potential of an offensive putback on a break. Kantz now has 11, but that's his first basket since 10 minutes on the clock in the first half. A lot of screening for Davis inside to get him the ball down low. Davis won that first half matchup inside. Brown on the wing. And that skids off the rim, and it's going to be North Carolina ball. Pretty good block out by Manuel, even with three fouls. Shannon Brown, back-to-back -back trip down the floor. He hit three from opposite corners. At 12 in the first half. Coming off a career-high 24 in the regional final. Torbert on Felton right now. Felton quicker than he is there again. That same lob, this time it's to Williams. And they come busting out of the locker room with the first six to take the lead. Good idea by Michigan State. Go right back inside of the man. It's been hot. Just make the play. Aker on the way up. He was setting up for the slam. Probably and a pretty good foul. Camps. Yep, can't second. Because Brown was going to stuff that right over the top to Williams. Decent back screen by McCants. Let me correct that. That's only the first on McCants. And that was a good foul, though, Jim, for the simple reason that without question, that ball would have been flushed by Ager. But at least you put him on the foul line. But again, Michigan State, when they go to the foul line, terrific team. Ager, 81%. Their leading score on the season coming in by a total of three points over Allen Anderson, who will now retreat to the bench, talking about Anderson, and Williams sits down also. Trannon into the ball game now, and in that first half, Tom Izzo used three different people on May other than Davis. They played 12 minutes, they picked up three fouls, and scored two points. So the object is not for them to put up big stats, just to occupy minutes and wear May down. 
Akers two. Puts Michigan State back in front by one. May. Not a good ball hammer. In trouble. That's a good catch by Williams. And the camps will try to take nice ace to two big ball. Yep. Push off. Called on the freshman. Yeah, Knights will in real trouble there because McCants really sized you up. If you're too small, he'll go ahead and use that ball maneuver right in front and then just blow by. It's the second on Knights. So it was a quiet first half for the decorated Carolina freshman, Marvin Williams. Now it's McCants. Tranek defending, and McCants takes him. Takes him quickly. But again, look Here at this. Here they go. Ager and he's back to the line. That could be Manuel. I think that's number four on Manuel. But how about the job that Michigan State does breaking Ager and Brown down the sidelines before North Carolina picks up? Yep, number four on Jackie Manuel. Well, you better be ready for this bunch in transition. Oh, absolutely. And as I said before, they not only are quick. But this is what's changed a lot. Knights will get them the ball. They break out long and go wide, and then they can finish if they have that opportunity to turn the corner. Manuel has to come out with the four. David Noel in for him. Knightsel also sits, and it's Chris Hill into the lineup for the Spartans. Well, Manuel made all ACC defensive team, but Noel, as far as his athletic ability, can hang right with him. May There's have, that free throw shooting. Yep, you may have seen that stat go by a moment ago. Carolina has attempted one free throw in this game and missed it. That's it. Well, he'll launch it. He got it for the lead. Pretty good job by Noel turning the corner. Now there's what he can do better than Manuel. Much better offensive threat. Away from the ball as Trannon was posting up down low. They whistle Marvin Williams with the foul from behind. Freshman inexperienced, Jim, because you know they're not going to go to Trannon inside in the low post, get him the ball offensively. Here's Bay sitting down. Jawad Williams comes in for him, Billy. Jim, the last game that you can think of that May had that he's played like this was against Wake Forest way back in January 15th, where he had nine points and nine rebounds. Chris Hill. Made one in the first half. Not this time, and it's Marvin Williams climbing high. Trailer is Jawad. Lays it up, gets the soft roll. He is something else here tonight. Senior having a terrific game in McDonald's All-American. He's gone through some rough times at North Carolina, but having a big game here. Hager, tough shot. Good hands by Davis. Davis with the slam again. Able to keep possession. Up ahead, they try to beat them. It's transition. Oh, he had to walk. He did. Considering the score, you're up two. You don't need to make that pass. And no angle. And the ball thrown over the head. Williams did a terrific job. Don't you think, Jim, just hanging on before he walked? Melvin Scott back. McCants out. Roy Williams looking at this Michigan State depth and quickness decides he better go to his bench. He doesn't want a worn down team. Much of this North Carolina roster recruited by a man who's sitting on the Michigan State bench tonight. Davis on the baseline in trouble turns it over. There's Coach Wojcik. Izzo's assistant, who for four years was Matt Doherty's assistant. And a little uh, exchange here. Hey, wait a minute. Freshman says to the football player, don't give me that. <laughs> but you know, there's a trade. Look at Trent. Trent. Takes it away from Felton. Hammers it home. How about that? Well, you don't see that that often. Well, a guy like Tran in that size taking it away from Felton. That was a terrific play, and how about getting minutes and quality deals out of guys off the bench? That was just a great, great play. Felton three. Felton now showing some signs. Now there's a case where Trannon got picked. Should have stayed with a little bit longer on the hedge move. Teams are battling back and forth right now. Very important to get Davis back in the action down low. Dan Brown looking for the tie. Got it. Scott goes underneath the screen. Oh, this is some action out of the locker room these first five minutes. Well, Proviso East has one player in the final four. It looked like Brown wants to be right there, like his old teammate. Deep Brown and Shannon Brown. 
And Jawad Williams, can you believe he had only one double-figure scoring game in his last eight? But tonight, he has been the Carolina star with 18. And it's going the other way. They're going to call Davis down low. Positioning too forcefully. Heels have taken the lead. They were five down at halftime. Well, those who voted at CBS Sportsline have said now the precincts are all closed. They want to see North Carolina and Illinois on Monday night. I know there's someone else here would like to see that, too. You know that might be? Well, I think there are probably a lot of fans up there in blue, but there's one guy yeah. right there that you know what he wants <laughs> to see. Dean Smith, the incredible coach, the all-time winningest coach. But Jim, uh, doing some research on him a while back, he had 19 straight years where his team shot over 50%. And 16 of those 19 years, they shot over 70% from the foul line. We don't beat many clubs that can do that consistently. He was some coach. Yep. Loyalty here in the house tonight in St. Louis. May banks it in. May's final play for Dean Smith on the 76 U.S. Olympic team. And that was the start of the relationship that really led Sean May from Bloomington, Indiana, to go to Tar Heel country. Getting down, took that challenge. Nice job by Brown stepping out. Nothing there. And McCants chases it down. North Carolina has hit its last eight. Make it nine. That's what you can't let North Carolina do if you're Michigan State. Get in the open floor with Felton before you slow down his dribble. Davis out of the game. He's going to have to come back in with little or no rest. This tempo is just getting things out of control here for Michigan State now. Carolina taking advantage. And Good. Brown reaches in, and that is out of bounds, not a foul, going to the Tar Heels. Tar Heels with some uh, lobs. Jawad Williams, that was first half. Perry. And Williams again. Talked about all that. Great shooting under Dean Smith. Well, they've now hit the last nine from the floor in this one. Davis, a little rest on May. May goes right through him. Nothing there. Good job by Davis. Neitzel. Here's a lot of oh. school. And Aker unable to get it. It was a little behind him. Pull up. Three. Front of the rim. Oh, McCants does not again go for the loose ball. And it costs him. Tie up arrow, but it's... North Carolina ball. Might have been up too high on this one was taken, huh? He was looking down at that rim. I think he had to reach back a little too far. A lot of, there was a lot of oomph on that pass too, Jim. Wasn't very soft. Tough one to catch when you're that high up in the air. But Ager and Brown show that they're as good a finishers as any college team has. What's been the biggest reason for this Carolina turnaround in the second half? Well, I think in the open court, Jim, when you don't slow down Felton, North Carolina really gets into their running game. It's a pretty good delay right here where they're cleaning the floor for May, who could use the rest with all those guys that have been banging on him today. Detroit. 71% his team in this half. Kansen inside with Anderson, and he's so quick on the floor. Now whistle, McCants angry, unable to convert with a chance for a three-point play. Thursday, Survivor. How can a tribe of two compete against a tribe of eight? It has a secret alliance formed between them. That's a whole new Survivor Thursday on CBS. Nowhere near as big, but it reminds you of Antoine Jameson, who was so quick off the floor. And you remember back in the 1998 when, when North Carolina was the number one seed and Michigan State was a four in Greensboro. And that was with Jameson and Carter beat this Michigan State club and went on to the Final Four. From then on, though, Tom Izzo took three straight teams yep. to that Final Four. Yep, they wouldn't lose uh, before going to a Final Four for a long time. 99-2000 was the championship that year. And then 01. We'll see if Knights can get some things started again. They did well when they got that ball into Davis. 
Wow. There he is. Get in and over May. Deep oh. shot. Gets around to Aker. Oh, oh wow. Blocked by Jawad Williams. But again, Michigan State getting those second chance opportunities. Ager, and it's Williams on the box out. Up ahead, Noel slips a bit, tries to save it, and right to Jawad Williams, who's everywhere tonight. Seven point run by the Tar Heel. Looking for more. McCants guns it down. Penetration and kick out. Biggest deficit of the tournament for Michigan State. You know who had it on him before was Old Dominion in their first round. Had him seven at one time before the Spartans came back. Roy Williams of the Tar Heels take the 10-point lead. Aerial coverage of today's game is provided by Monster. Today's the day as we return to St. Louis. And I've got to say it, Billy, this has been a sensational Final Four site. You know, it was awarded a number of years ago, and, you know, people discuss these things in advance. Will that work? I don't know. They've had it years ago. It has been great. You should have seen the turnout yesterday, folks, at the open practice, and that's just one example. But over 30,000 on hand, and it's well-deserving, in my mind, after seeing 20 of them, to come back again far sooner then from 1978 to 2005, the late the last time. Hill, important three, and it dips down and out. I don't know if that's the shot you want coming out of a timeout. Here comes Felton. And May to the line. And Felton again. Now what's happening to Michigan State, they're not stopping him as he crosses half court. And when you turn him loose, he'll make plays. NCAA March Madness on Demand gives you total access to the men's tournament. Replay all the games in the video archive, and you can get live team press conferences, game highlights, and more only at NCAAsports.com or CSTV.com. Hill with his first, and May to shoot a pair. And Jim, in that first half, remember how May seemed to be extremely tired with all that banging on four different players playing on him. It looks like he's gotten his second win now getting up and down the floor which is something Felton really likes because he likes his great hands to be on the end of those passes in the lane. This game was tied at 49. Now 12 unanswered for North Carolina. Now you've got Brown and Ager and Davis. You want to see if Brown and Ager can get back into this ball game a little bit with some touches here instead of Hill. They've missed their last six. From the field, no doubling down here on Davis. Corbin puts up the three, and Big the senior, shot. huge shot. Marvin Williams wants it inside, and Torbett's just hold him. Good action by the freshman, trying to get loose. Yep, Torbett, and his first. It contained Marvin Williams. But not Jawad Williams. Sean Mays starting to get it going too. North Carolina five down at halftime has rebounded in the second half for Coach Roy Williams. And we talked about Rick Patino, first to direct three different programs to the Final Four. Well, Roy joins a very short list of coaches to take two teams to the Final Four, and he's done it the quickest in the second time around for the second program. Only his second year. Did you expect he could do it that fast when he took over? Well, he had a pretty decent nucleus, but what he had to do is to change the mindset of the guys that he inherited, and he really did a good job. That first year at North Carolina, lob pass, Williams wide open. Defended by Trannon, and May puts it back. And now North Carolina starting to get on the deep, the offensive glass with some second chance points. Trannon down inside, Michigan State will not look for him. With a three just a short while ago, and this one pulled down by Marvin Williams. May wanting that ball inside, a little bit of push by Davis. May recovers nicely. May head to the line. He is fired up. And he wants that ball, Jim, which is a sign of a kind of player you want to get that ball to. Tomorrow on 60 minutes. Pope John Paul II, his impact on the U.S. Now it'll last a lot longer than many might think. The story is tomorrow on 60 Minutes. Trannon picking up his third and May for a pair. 
Well, Jim, you start talking about fathers and sons. We have Sean and Scott May made it to the Final Four. Mike and Henry Bibby. Of course, both of those guys were on victorious teams. Well, and before you, you go, Marcus Johnson and Chris. Before you go too far, don't forget about Sean's brother, Scott Jr. Right. Played within that, so that's the first time that the fathers had two kids make yeah, it to the Final Four. Yeah, he had himself. Yeah, exactly. two roster. Yep. The so others. You've got some that have been able to win, both father and son. We mentioned Bibby's. Arizona and Bibby's UCLA that were able to win the national championship each. North Carolina now picking up way out in their man to man. And Anderson could be a big key if the Spartans are to find a way to come back here in this one. Nice set play. Good step back by Ager. Tough shot. Tough shot Ager. is right. Yep. And again, it's May. Picked off by Hill. Nice recovery by Hill with the other anticipation. McCants probably should have come to get the ball. Davis with the jumper. And it's all Carolina underneath with Felton. Now here's Felton doing what Magic Johnson used to do back in 79. Take the ball from a rebound position, take it up the floor and create his own fast break. Two-point basket, Billy, gives North Carolina the 15-point bulge. Largest of the night. An 18-3 stretch. And a reminder, CBS's new Friday night hit has a fresh formula for solving crimes. It's all in the numbers. See why critics say numbers all adds up, according to the critics. Friday, 10 at 9, 10, 9 Central on CBS. Jim, this run by North Carolina reminds of what we saw down in Charlotte in the opening round against Iowa State, where they got on that terrific run offensively. Anderson, five, five count, second yep. count, good defense by North Carolina. And Roy Williams with this lead gets a chance to rest May. And Felton doesn't look like he wants any rest. Boy, he has got a determined look on his face. It had to hurt some of the Spartan fans at home when they heard you compare Felton to Magic Johnson because he's hitting shots and well what Magic Johnson was so effective at is grabbing rebounds off the defensive end in that matchup zone that Judd Heathcote used and then taking it all the way with the dribble nice play by Anderson on the defense yep defensive Jim and come out with it Hill looks ahead got Ager on the wing at Davis inside for the easy lay-in good job by Michigan State and I hope people weren't thinking, I'm thinking Felton is as good as Magic Johnson. <laughs> that was a little magical. <laughs> You've got to stop his dribble out front. Anderson down low. Kicks it over to the other side. Did this tempo in the second half just get things out of control for Michigan State? Away from him. As you see, Jawad Williams in his game, too. Sharp in the first half. And big baskets to begin the second as well. Well, Jim, you know if a team on the course of the year has been the number one scoring team in the country, it means they want to get up and down the floor. Do you want to play their game or do you want to play your game? Obviously, a little bit more control is beneficial for Michigan State. You let this team turn loose, and it could be a problem. Neitzel and Trannon for Michigan State. May and Melvin Scott. As Marvin Williams heads out, McCants as well. As an example, you go back to the course of the year. They scored 106 against Iowa, 91 against Kentucky, 91 against Georgia Tech. Those are the kind of games where they want to get in that flow, running up and down the floor with his deep finger there. Ager out, Torbett in. Tomazo trying to get some fresh players defensively. May had that little rest. Trannon on him inside. I'll bet you Felton lets him touch the ball. There he is. Nice double down. Good kick out. Right back to May. Finds a man inside. It's Noel and his last touch. Now they're going to call a foul on Shannon Brown. You can't no believe it. Noel went in for Manuel, Jim, and I said there won't be much of a fall off there. I realize that Manuel was all-conference defensive player, but Noel has got good hands, strong, and maybe even a superior athlete. It's a one and one for Noel. Grew up just a few miles from the Duke University campus in Durham. And a 
over the back ball on Carolina. Vivian Williams. You said it earlier. When you say Williams on North Carolina, you know, you have to kind of look around. You talk at Jawad, you talk at Marvin, you talk at Roy. <laughs> that is on, uh, actually on May. They call it on May, and that's two well, on the Carolina Center. He picked up one early in the ball game. And it's Brown. Look and it's Noel. Noel. That's what I was talking about. Yep. Understanding what's happening there on the double downs, just as we saw Terry break after throwing the ball to May. Smart play by Noel to do likewise. Third foul on Anderson, and again, Illinois, 15 point winner earlier tonight. 15 point final margin was what, in fact, was the largest margin of the game. They held Francisco Garcia to only four points. They shot 63 percent in that second half. They got 20 from Powell, 20 from Luther Head as they advance. Air ball by Noel, only a 58 percent free throw shooter, but so it was probably a pretty good foul on the part of Michigan State. One more. That's three straight by Noel and misses. Gives Michigan State a little opening here. Spartans need to take advantage. Just coming off an empty trip. Anderson rejected by Jawad. Over to Shannon Brown and tipped up Torbert. We have a look at Raymond Felton. Michigan State does a nice job getting back down floor. Felton had eyes for the fast break. Nothing there. That sequence sends Davis to the scores table to check in. Follow up. No. Noel. And May again struggling a little bit coming back down court. Not a good pass. What a catch though. Torbert lays it up and in. Shannon Brown just cupped that one and came back down. Keep it alive. A little opening here for Michigan State. They've got it to 11. Hager's also going to come back in. Hager and Davis. Juan Williams, well, and he's just not missing. That's a tough shot to make, too. You're going right at the pass. And normally your momentum takes your eye off that basket and you shoot it long. Wow, what nice kind of shot. shot. And a long board to Felton. They've got the four on two. Underneath, dump it over to May, and he lays it in for the easy basket. Boy, right back to 15, matching the largest lead of the game. Now Michigan State looks tired, and Tom Izzo's got to take a time out of his own, get some fresh troops in there. He had some subs. He wanted to check in. There's just no dead ball situation to do that. And he's telling Knight, so we don't need that job. Charges. Where we are right now in this one. 6.53 to go. Tuesday on CBS, don't miss an episode of NCIS that we'll keep you guessing until the very end. Mark Harmon stars. That's Tuesday on CBS. Well, what Michigan State needs right now is a guy that scored 18 in that game with Team Cleaves. He was their leading scorer and obviously the guy that led them to great success in years that followed. Almost a turnover that time by training. And looking for Davis. Back out to Hill. Step back three. And it's McCants with it. And Hill just unable. We're talking about a guy that was one of the premier outside shooters in the country prior to this year. Yep. Fifth holds all the, time. Yeah, he holds the record at Michigan State with 10 of 18 threes that he had against Syracuse. He used to be just a great perimeter shooter. And it's fifth all time, uh, talking about Hill, in Big Ten Conference plays. One for six tonight. Yeah, and he's the number two career three point shooter. Now, Sean Restwood at Michigan State. Hager, and there's the ball. It's a charge. Finally, Emmanuel gets a foul going the other way. He picked up four earlier. Pretty good defense on his part. Sean May returns. And Williams out. Jawad Williams. Jawad Williams, who was really struggling 
had a hip flexor problem, but uh, really came up big in this ball game today, particularly when North Carolina struggled. That hip flexor problem you mentioned happened in the ACC tournament. It's Clemson, and he has struggled until tonight. Williams so strong inside, but nothing there. Davis still battling. Somehow, Jack Emanuel has it. Comes out of the pack. Good job by Felton. Pull things back out. Get something good here. Everybody doing 360 spins. <laughs> and that's knocked out by Maurice Ager. And here comes uh, Spartans Kelvin Turbin. Another senior coming in for Hill. And with five minutes and uh, roughly 30 seconds to go for North Carolina, you've got to now start being a little bit more patient. Take good shots here. You don't want to give any opening whatsoever for Michigan State. Dance, looking for help. Outside it goes with May. Jumper. And May, a different man in the second half. Seems a lot fresher, doesn't he, Jim? It really does. Yep. Yeah, you spotted that fatigue issue early. Well, sometimes you, you just lose your wind early, but I thought Izzo did a fine job in that first half. Look at Davis taking it to him. Too strong, and May and Davis battle. Tie up. It goes to the Spartans. Uh, Davis really showing some energy out here right now. Young man who's had a terrific run here late in the year. May with 18 in the game, 14 of them coming in this half. Five minutes to go. Good screen, and there's a hold, and Manuel will sit down. Five fouls. He got four quick ones in that first half. Roy Williams going to give him a hand. That brings Noel back in. Pretty good trade off for North Carolina. Well, Manuel, one of the seniors, one of the seniors in Carolina who has lived through so much. That 8 and 20 freshman year, an NIT second season, out in the second round last year to Texas in the NCAAs, and now just five minutes away from a championship game appearance. The Cats walk down the sideline. Now, almost a hide down the corner, and Torbett saw him out of the corner of his eye and ran down here to stay with him. The dance thought he was going to sneak one in. Pretty clever move in his part, and nice job by Torbett to spot him. It's the eighth free throw made in this half by Ager, but still 15 down. They're going to have to pull off an Illinois like comeback. How about. Louisville type comeback any kind of comeback that's not the kind of shot if you're North Carolina you want you want to occupy some clock here make them play May Bob Brandon now Brown on the floor no whistle Belton up ahead Noel gives it up the can soars and Trannon hustles oh, down to get the defensive state. how about Trevor Ager called for it gets it underneath pinned and it'll be Michigan State ball. Well, we are seeing some blocks against fast-breaking opportunities by guys that are great finishers. McCants can finish. Boy, what a block by Williams. Elvin Scott returns. That Bograk is in for Michigan State. This is a nice move, I think, here by Roy Williams. He's going to go with two guards out on the floor, probably to get a little better ball handling. And force Michigan State to really have to play hard in the half court defense. They need a three. Ager Got hits it for him. Still a dozen down. 4-16 to play. Marvin Williams bouncing it in inside. And a three-point opportunity for the Tar Heel. Great creation by May on that place. Davis was right there to block that shot. in this half they're shooting Felton hit a couple of long range shots Jawad Williams hot throughout but May now with 20 on the game 16 and a half very quiet first half by this young man but uh, he has picked it up he's got the great hands worked so hard to get his body in condition to be the kind of player he is there he is hustling back down court North Carolina not shooting free throws that well, Jim. This is the kind of situation you can really build on that lead. Ager hit one a minute ago. This Tough one shot. really deep. Oh! And again, Maurice Ager on a step back three. 
11's the margin. Scott pops it in. And Tranum helped. That one might have bounced. They thought off his foot. They make an appeal. They thought that went off the shoe of May, but it'll be North Carolina ball coming out of the break. Akers hit their last eight points. Well, Mr. Eagle Eye Nance spotted something here I never saw. Watch this. And that is Sean May's foot in contact with the ball. And there it goes out of bounds. A nice punt, Jim. And uh, you were all over it. Unfortunately, though, for uh, Spartan fans, it wasn't seen that way by everyone. So it'll be North Carolina ball up 11. 27 seconds on the clock. On the shot clock, 3.38 to go. North Carolina now has to start playing smart like we saw Illinois play in the first game where they just made it impossible for Louisville to come back. When there are comebacks, the team that gives up the lead sometimes allows the comeback. Right back in, and look at Davis's hustle. It'll still go back to the Tar Heels with 17 on the shot clock. Now you can't fault Davis at all, Jim, down this stretch. He has played so hard both ends of the floor. And hasn't gotten the rest much in this second half. First half, he was able to take some time off because he never had to go head-to-head -head with May. There's 14 rebounds, Billy. Tying career high. Get inside, they go. Another lob that delivers. May again. And Felton wanted to have that one. Hager, it's been hot. Yep. Defended this time, though. Scott gets it out of there, squats wow. it out. Another lob. You can see that coming, and this is what you don't want to have happen if you're Michigan State. You turn a team, the number one scoring team in the country, loose in this regard, and it's going to cost you. Come on, Marvin Williams at one end, and then Maurice Ager at the other, the call at the two. There's a May dunk. Marvin Williams got the next one. That ball was beautifully thrown by McCants, too, Jim. Nice, soft, put it up there so hands could just put it away. Speaking of identical scores, this is the score by which Illinois beat Michigan State in their one matchup this year. And North Carolina's moving in on an Illinois matchup right now. They played uh, Michigan State, the common opponent here, to an identical score at the moment. And you look at front court scoring. And the advantage to the Tar Heels in the CBS Sports Line stand of the game. Complete tournament coverage, CBS Sports Line. And, and Jim, you know, the guy you really want to credit, I realize that that is a substantial difference, but the guy you really want to credit, even more than me, I think, is Williams. Rod Williams today, when North Carolina needed him the most, really stepped up in that first half. And here's Scott, who hit two key foul shots. Bill comes back for Bogracus. Yeah, I agree, Billy. As big as May has been in this half, that first half by Jawad Williams, and even in uh, portions in the early going in this half, Jawad was carrying him. Yep. Now you've got Ager, the guy that wants that ball. Looks like he wants to take the shot. He's got to help out on him a little bit. The last 10 points on the board by the Spartans have come by way of Ager. But North Carolina is marching through another Big Ten team tonight. It was Wisconsin in the regional final. Michigan State here tonight. And we'll have another wait for them on Monday night, it appears, because they're just two minutes away from sealing it. Well, we talked about them facing each other in 1957 in a Final Four. North Carolina came away with a triple overtime win there, and it looks like they'll come away with a win here as well. Four on the shot clock, and Felton. You get Williams. Oh, they say it's off of Michigan State. I didn't see it that way. Williams, about six foot ten, long arms, pretty strong for a freshman. Timeout, North Carolina. North Carolina calls it. Tom Izzo has said, my most special Final Four team of all. That run's about to come to an end. Jim, this Michigan State team has three seniors uh, that have scored over 1,000 points, coupled with Davis, 
That gives them four players on this year's team with 1,000 points. Never been done before in Michigan State history. But you know what is really amazing? We've had four teams play today, and all four teams, there's only been 48 teams in the history of college basketball that have had four players with 1,000 points, and four of them played on this court today. Unbelievable. Pretty amazing when yep. you think about that. That's in the history of the game. That's right. 48. Four of the 48, all of them are here. That's four, right. All four of them here are and able that, to be blessed with 4,000 point scores. You know what? has got to the line. What that talks about is unselfish play, guys who obviously enjoy playing with each other, and guys willing to give up the ball. Well, when Tom Izzo said his team was void of any superstars, but it was also a team that was ego free. They had four games in the tournament before this one, four different leading scores in those games. Tom Izzo joining Fred Taylor, the old Ohio State coach, is the only two to take four teams to the Final Four in their first 10 years. Pretty amazing accomplishment. Reach around on Williams, Marvin Williams. And of course, uh, Fred Taylor was able to take those teams led by Jerry Lucas, John Havlicek, the guy who hasn't had too bad a coaching career in the NCAA. Bob Knight played on those teams. Three straight years, Ohio State with Fred Taylor went to the Final Four, winning in their sophomore year and then losing to Cincinnati in their junior and senior years. Davis front end of a one and one. Thursday night, they had the uh, salute presentation. All four teams were on hand, all the players, the coaches, and Coach Izzo was asked about all that talk on the selection night when he's told his team they had a hunch that we were going to be going on a run. He says, I have no doubt we're going to have a run. But he did admit, I didn't expect that run was going to take us all the way to St. Louis. It's been a hugely successful NCAA tournament, even though it's going to end earlier than they had hoped for this week. Five seed making it all the way to the Final Four. North Carolina and Illinois will be the championship matchup. It's the matchup the college basketball fans have been clamoring for for at least two months. Yeah, let's go back to January. Marvin Williams with the three. And Ager able to sky for the rebound. Final minute. Ager in the paint. Nice job getting inside there, and Williams wisely pulls the ball back. Everybody looks for Felton. What do you think if North Carolina is able to beat the third place team from the Big Ten, the second place team from the Big Ten, and then Monday night beat Illinois, they would not only win the Big Ten tournament championship, but the NCAA championship. They'd be the Big Ten champs, in a way, and the national champs. And how about Seth Davis? What did he lecture everybody that had he said this tempo was going to cost him. Absolutely. If they, if they you try to play with North Carolina State. this way, he was all over. Yes, it. he was. He issued a warning at halftime. Yes, he did. And in fact, that did do him in. And here come all the subs. They'll take the starters out, and we'll see him again on Monday night. That should be quite a game. And as you said, Jim, I, I would say since... Uh, Wake Forest got knocked off by Illinois, you know, early in, and Illinois just destroyed Wake Forest at their place. And uh, North Carolina, even though they struggled a little bit, they got lost to Wake Forest. I think people were saying, you know, these are the two best teams in the country, and here they earn their way to play each other on Monday night. The way it ought to be. Well, you said that on Selection Sunday. You said, I think that those two teams, Illinois and North Carolina, are the two best. There are a bunch of teams that are just a little bit behind them. But these two that ended up in the uh, final AP poll, 1-2, Illinois 1, North Carolina 2, will play for the championship. Ah, nice. And there was what I was talking about, unselfish play. Torbert, the senior, giving up the ball to a guy who had a better shot. Well, Drackers wanted a foul there and didn't get the call. That's Holly with the three. And Davis still working for everything. Robert, a man that so much was expected of when he came to Michigan State, accepted his role as a sub, great team player, had a fine career. Amo keeps it alive, out to Davis. Holly pours it, pulls it down, and North Carolina is in the championship matchup with Illinois. A resounding second half performance by the Tar Heels. 21 point turnaround.
in all in the second half. Roy Williams will play for that elusive championship on Monday night. Well, he's won 39 NCAA tournament games, and that's the most anybody's ever won who has not yet won a championship. The coach and the squad that has return the Carolina program to prominence. They find themselves in the Monday night matchup with Illinois. The Fighting Illini and the Tar Heels will meet on this floor Monday night. 87-71, the final, North Carolina. As we welcome you back to St. Louis, we remind you that coming up next for many of you, your late local news. Stay tuned. So tonight, North Carolina's Tar Heels advance with an 87 to 71 win over the Spartans of Michigan State. Here are your Chevy most valuable players for our second game tonight. Maurice Ager with 24 points for Michigan State. Sean May, 22 points, seven rebounds for North Carolina. March Madness 2005 culminates on Monday night and CBS Sports coverage begins at nine Eastern time with prelude to a championship followed by the NCAA championship game between North Carolina and Illinois. Jim Nance and Billy Pack are standing by courtside with head coach Roy Williams and Jawad Williams of the Tar Heels. Jim. All right, Greg, Roy Williams, Jawad Williams. I'll let you begin, Billy, with Jawad. Well, Jawad, we saw you struggle coming into this ball game, but stepping up as a senior was a great thing to watch. How did it feel out there tonight to have everything going your way? It felt great. I mean, I'm not worried about my individual performance. I just wanted my team to get a W tonight. Well, you led them that way tonight, didn't he? It was great to see. Coach, I got to ask you about what the difference was in the second half and your thoughts looking ahead to Monday night. I think the determination of Jawad and the other guys to play much better and compete harder in the second half. Because the first half, we didn't compete like we have all year long. And, you know, Marty Schottenheimer one time told me, enjoy the wins until midnight. So I'm going to enjoy this. Illinois is a great club. I think they've done the most of anybody all year long. But we get to play the game. All right, Coach. I know we got to let you go. We'll see you guys Monday night. Congratulations. Nice going. In the national championship game, Illinois, North Carolina. And we'll continue from St. Louis in a moment. A look at St. Louis, Missouri on this busy Final Four Saturday night. Our aerial coverage provided by Monster. Today's the day. We'd like to remind you once again, your late local news is coming up next for many of you here on CBS. Welcome back, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. Your final thoughts on what we just saw. Very impressive second half by North Carolina defensively and on the defensive glass. No second shot attempts for Michigan State. That fueled their fast break and got them to double-digit lead. North Carolina did a great job flipping on that switch in the second half, but you cannot do that against Illinois. It's going to take North Carolina's best defensive performance of the season, and they're going to have to play two full halves to close this thing out. All right, guys. want to remind you, tomorrow you can start your sports viewing day on CBS at noon Eastern time with live coverage of the NASDAQ 100 men's tennis final between the world's number one player, Roger Federer, and 18-year-old Rafael Nadal of Spain. Monday night, our exclusive live primetime coverage of the 2005 NCAA men's basketball championship game tips at 9 Eastern time with prelude to a championship followed by the NCAA title game, North Carolina and Illinois. We thank you for being with us, for Clark, for Seth, for all of us here at CBS Sports. I'm Greg Gumbel. Good night from St. Louis. We'll see you Monday evening. Monday on The Late Show. Don't miss.